One of my favorite Beyonce songs is Listen. And of course it comes in that film with Jamie Foxx, who did a pretty good job for a serious character in the film Dreamgirls. And it was Marvelous who did the directing, who did the acting, who did the producing, and how beautiful a story that that was weaved because someone really thought about how do we move America to understand the story. But what we also saw in that film, which was really great for God Glory, was how personal arrogance and an inability to work as a team member and someone wanting more than others could harm them. Because the, the gal's name, who I can't remember now, I think her name was Mary, who didn't quite make it with the Supremes to the claim to fame. And let's face it, probably Diana Ross got most of the money, it's hard to say, as the leader and the singer of that area of that day, is that we didn't always know how to bring people back into the fold back then. We didn't always know the leadership skills that people value. We didn't always know what scientifically works to be successful. And the one thing that I try to say very gently, because my own son played the hip-hop boy too, with his britches below his ass when he was in high school, but that was age appropriate, and my Japanese spouse and I knew that when he was at school, he was one way. When he was with us in our business, he was another way. When he was at church with us at Every Nation, he was something different because our black pastor was pretty marvelous with him. And sadly, over the course of time, we did leave there, but eventually we learned that those pro players from basketball and other type of sports who led that had some challenges in their own life that they weren't sharing and that got them caught as many pastors of power have their own shorts giving shorts shortcomings and short givings now when i'm sitting in the streets i'm not worried about me per se because i do have some life and liberties that are protected today but i am very aware and very acutely in tune with what is and isn't obviously normal so it is true that my skills are being tested by people to see if they're passable so that they can play into communities and determine whether or not they're matchable. I can only tell certain things about certain communities to a point, but I can most definitely turn, figure out who speaks Japanese fluently and who is not right. Whether or not my Japanese skills are perfect is not the question. I've been around it enough to know who is and isn't Japanese, not only by their brow line and their eye line and their hairstyles and their clothing, but how they utilize the language in Japanese. You see, this is the type of expertise that children in America want to learn from. And all my children, when I mean children, I mean predominantly teens, were able to pass the Japanese language proficiency test, which is a pretty good measure grammatically anyway, of whether or not the person can speak Japanese for the day. Almost all my students could speak fluently after a few weeks because we required it in submersion. The minute you hit the classroom, you were in Japanese to the best of your ability, and we'd work with them to keep going, and so they would come in and they'd give their life story in Japanese, and they would give their essays and their journals in Japanese. And I would grade them, or my spouse or my son would grade them, and we were able to do that, of course, because of our levels of fluency. But any time in my classroom, I would always yield to my Japanese spouse, who was a classically trained Japanese in everything. So while people thought she was precious and sweet, she was almost all the time, but she was still pretty neat to me. And despite what I might write in my book about recognizing that at some point we weren't equally yoked, part of that was my fault, and that's something that over the course of time the Lord revealed to me. That I wasn't fully acknowledging her different signs, because I was the guy who had to lead the family out of poverty on both sides. It's not that I came from poverty, but I came from a very large family, white-collar workers, who lived on very little most of the time. It did cause amazing stress in my father, who used somewhat of alcohol to de-stress himself at five when he came home. The Manhattans came out. But I don't need some sibling trying to play at me 
language and things to remind me of family because I'm going to tell you this again and again, you sinful son of a bitch. That what was my family of origin is not my family today. I never saw you coming to events on time to honor my mother or father. I never saw you coming into my life when I had a family unless my son was somewhat of a bother. And even then it was kind of a risk because you and your ideologies and attitudes about my family were obviously not right. My son did struggle here because of the sinfulness of children from other nations. And openly that's true with the twist because kids who come in in international statuses openly hang out with other kids of international statuses. My son had a British girlfriend and she was a girl and she was his friend but she was a little portly but that didn't mean she wouldn't try to make a move on my innocent son and it didn't mean that my son didn't have the right to take a few moves back so that he could have experiences of being a growing boy and a child of his culture and nation. And we allowed that, but the problem was the stepfather in that family thought it was okay to give someone else's child alcoholism or alcohol when they were over for dinner. And I was beyond offended the day we went and we entertained ourselves in their house with food and them to get to better to know them. But I was glad we did that because I was more cautious after that because that stepfather was somehow the one that was bringing that mother and daughter from England here and openly he wasn't English he was Irish <clears throat> where the concept of alcohol was different there at the same time he was constantly being made fun of by his American instructor who just thought the Japanese culture was the same as Chinese or Korean and she thought in her 35 years of being an ESL instructor that she just knew everything there was to know. I was like, no, you totally humiliated my son in Japanese culture and you just don't fucking get it because you don't know it enough. You see, I can say the truth of how things went for us, but we really worked it out. And thanks to my tough love, he turned himself around. Despite the fact his Hispanic friends were trying to get him in trouble all the time. Out of their arrogance. He did have some rich friends who were very kind to him, and I appreciated that, but it also put us in disparagement a lot of times. They were way above our food demographics. Because I'm just a small business owner and making time for my family, and their father wasn't making time for their child at all, who was probably gay, and we didn't care about that at that time. But maybe my son didn't want to hang out with some gay boys anymore, and that was okay by me, because he was a heterosexual boy. So if I talk about the truth of my family, I've seen a lot. But what I know about every family that came to my Japanese language program is that their parents always made the comment that their child learned more from me about real life on top of what they learned in Japanese. Now I did have a predominant set of adults studying in my program that didn't want to always do their homework and that sometimes there's a point where our minds time out in terms of what we can take in from a foreign language despite how hard we try. And openly, one of the hardest parts of being an, um, any type of business owner that has long-term relationships and programs is that sometimes people time out or sometimes we're ready for them to time out because there's nothing else we can offer them besides encouragement in their wealth to travel to Japan for more experiences and more opportunities to practice across the land. But all my kids and all my guests and all my short-term clients could sleep, eat, and poop in Japanese, which was basically the purpose of the business travels that came into my program through the local community college study of conversational Japanese. And then because I was such the instructor with the right relationships with that in major university, they always encouraged the students if a program for the second level wasn't going to go on that they could come to my program. And even the Native Japanese Language School honored my program. So anyone pretending to be my program is not going to do very well because those people in my community know me, know my face, despite my bearded face now. And now I look sort of like, I keep hearing the word kafka from God about this. I don't remember who it is exactly. But the point is that in America, we can be bilingual, bicultural, and have a bilingual, bicultural family. 
but we still are American in terms of how we work towards life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness for everyone, and the regardment of our liberties.